Hello and welcome back to Biker Stuff. First of all, if anyone can hear a strange noise today, I do apologise. My puppy is in the corner chewing something. <laughs> oh. uh, I have been asked to show a coolant change, flush and refill. I'm going to do this on the Tiger 800, but I will try to keep it as generic as I can. Normally, if you look after your bike and regularly change your coolant about every two years, you shouldn't need to flush the system. But if you bought a bike like this one with nearly 90,000 miles on it, you can't know for sure how much the previous owner looked after it. A buildup of dirt inside the cooling system can cause the water pump to become clogged and not push as much water around the engine as it needs, subsequently causing it to run hot, then overheat and possibly seize. I'll show you the full procedure on this bike and it will be interesting to see what comes out during the flush. On this Tiger, as far as I know, you cannot remove and strip the water pump as it is a joint unit with the oil pump. If yours does have a separate water pump, it might be worth pulling it out and giving it, it a thorough clean once the miles have built up. Let me start with an important safety notice. Despite what you may have seen on other Steve YouTube videos, you never unscrew the radiator cap or remove any hoses when the engine is hot. The coolant is under pressure, so if the hot water gets out, it will go everywhere and even scold you. To avoid any confusion, do this before you have used the bike that day. Many coolants are poisonous, so please be careful with it. Don't get it on your skin, in your eyes, and don't let your pets or anyone drink it. Some people refer to coolant types by the colour they are, but the makers of it can add any colour they like, so don't be fooled. Read the bottle if you want to know what it is made from. You can buy ready mix, which is a great idea and will save you a job. If you buy a concentrated antifreeze, as I do, you will need to dilute it. Mix it 50-50 with deionized water. Don't use tap water because it has chemicals in it that will oxidise the inside of your radiator and engine, which will in time clog the passages of your radiator and cause the bike to overheat. The things you will need to do this job, apart from the tools, are deionised or distilled water. Deionised is probably easier to find as most supermarkets sell it. Distilled white vinegar. Again, you can get this from the supermarket. Coolant or antifreeze, whatever you call it, it is the same thing. I prefer propylene glycol because it's not poisonous like ethylene glycol is. But you will still need to dispose of it correctly and not down the drain or in a flower bed. You will need something to mix the coolant in if you buy a concentrate and you will need a tub to collect the old coolant. I also have a hand towel ready for any spillages. Finally, but most importantly, you'll need some gloves and maybe eye protection. Let's get the bike ready. Some bikes like to be on the side stand and some on the centre stand for this. If the bike has a top hose with a bleed screw, you can do it on the side stand. I'm going to do this with the bike vertical, as it will be easier to film, even though this bike has a bleed screw, which I'll show you in a moment. 
Step one is to remove the old coolant. First, you will need to remove the panels. With all the hoses visible, inspect them for damage and wear. If you find anything suspicious, now is the time to replace it. If your bike has a drain bolt, you will need to remove this, but the Tiger doesn't. Don't fully remove the radiator cap, just unscrew it and leave it in the hole. This will prevent the coolant racing out the engine and all over you. Some bikes have a drain that goes down and some that point out the side. If your drain points out of the side of the bike, take the bolt out slowly and let the coolant drain in a controllable way. Now, we're ready to drain the coolant. Get your tub and towel to collect it. If your reservoir is higher than your rad, it will empty when you take the cap off. Watch. Hallelujah! Once the system has fully drained, you can put it all back together again ready for a flush. Step two is to flush the years of built up muck in the radiator and cooling chambers of the engine. For this, I'm using distilled white vinegar and deionized water. I am mixing it 50-50. This is the radiator bleed screw. It is plastic and has a crosshead in the top, which is likely to be chewed like this one. 
you will probably need a pair of pliers to remove it. It might be worth getting a new one before you start if it looks like this. Now remove the upper hose bleed screw if your bike has one. Slowly fill the radiator with flush until the liquid appears in both sides. Squeeze the lower hose from time to time to help circulate it around the engine. Once full, replace the bleed screws on both sides and refit the radiator cap. There is no need to put any flush in your reservoir. Open the garage door, reconnect the battery and start the engine. Blip the throttle a few times and after about 30 seconds, turn it off. Take the radiator cap off and check the level. If it needs refilling, do that now. Refit the cap, 
start the engine and let it run until the gauge shows it has reached its running temperature. Turn it off and head to the kitchen for a well-earned cup of tea. Welcome back. Now I'm going to check the engine is cold, then drain the flush. It will be interesting to see what comes out. I'll follow the same procedure as I did with the original coolant drain. It might be worth removing and cleaning the reservoir tank at this point. Sometimes the plastics can absorb the blue dye from the coolant and then it looks like it is always full. A bottle brush will help with this. That is actually amazingly clean. That's good. Good job. Step three is to put the hose on or your drain bolt. If you have a drain bolt, put a new copper crush washer on. Then fill with fresh antifreeze, which should be mixed 50-50 with deionized water. Open the garage door. Mm -hmm. 
Now, start the engine, flip the throttle a few times and after about 30 seconds, turn it off. Once again, take the radiator cap off and check the level. If it needs refilling, do that now. Again, I'll run the engine until it's at its running temperature, then shut it down, let it cool. I will then check the level on the reservoir and adjust accordingly. I will make sure everything is ready to go the next time this bike takes to the road. I hope you found this useful and maybe interesting too. It might be worth posting a link to this video on your Facebook bike group to help others who are looking to do this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I know you liked it so do tell your friends and I'll see you here next time on Biker Stuff.